Hello, Internet. Jordan here from Mayo to the Mead. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to calculate your starting gravity when you have whole fruit in primary. Now, I'm not going to pretend to be one of the experts that can explain to you all of the math and equations that go into this, but there are online calculators that have all of that pre-programmed for you. Anyone can use these as long as you know how to set the calculator up correctly. Unfortunately, there does seem to be a little bit of confusion on how to do that, so that's what we're going to do today. Let's get to it. Now, you may be wondering, why do I even need to use a calculator here? Can't I just take a hydrometer reading? And, well, most of the time, yes, and I applaud you for looking to take hydrometer readings in the first place. However, there are situations in which your hydrometer can't get an accurate reading. One of the most obvious and common ones is when you have whole fruit in primary. The fruit has a bunch of both sugar and water that won't have been fully released into the must until so far into primary that a brew day reading isn't going to be remotely accurate. The only realistic option at that point is to try to calculate the starting gravity of your must, which is what I'm going to show you how to do now. If you aren't familiar with the Gottmead calculator that I'm going to be using today, link in the description. The gist of it is that you need to check the box next to the values that you know, enter those values, and then leave the box unchecked next to the value that you want it to calculate for you. I'll show you a basic melomel as an example. So to start with, let's check the boxes next to target volume, additional sugars number one, which we'll leave set to honey, and additional sugars number two, which we'll set to, let's say, blueberries. Now, enter your recipe. I'm gonna say I'll be using 12 pounds of honey, nine pounds of blueberries, and uh, let's say a target volume of three gallons. Honey and blueberry weight should be fairly straightforward, but for target volume, keep in mind that this is the total volume of all of your ingredients, the honey, the fruit, and the water all combined. It's not just how much water you're putting in, it's all of those things combined. I'll revisit that in a minute, but for now, just click outside of the last field that you entered and you'll see our gravity field updates with our newest value. And that's it, that's all it takes. If this is my recipe, then my starting gravity should be pretty close to 1.157. Obviously, since things like honey and blueberries are not manufactured ingredients, they're created organically, it's kind of impossible for the calculator to know exactly what the sugar content of either of those things is going to be, and this is technically a little bit of an estimate. But in my experience, it's about as close as your hydrometer is in the first place. None of our homebrew tools are perfect, and this is within the standard margin of error that you're already gonna be operating on. If you wanna try to run some tests and measure the exact sugar content of your specific honey or something like that, then you can change the sugar content for each of these here, but I've never bothered and I've never been very far off. Okay, now let's take a step back for a moment to talk about that target volume. In my opinion, how much water we use and what our target volume is, that's, that's something that us home brewers don't always use very precise language for and we can be a little confusing. Sometimes we say things like three gallons of spring water. And sometimes we say things like add water to three gallons. And those are two, frankly, very different things. Water to three gallons usually means that you're gonna put the fruit and the honey in your bucket first and then just continue adding water until you hit the three gallon total volume mark. If that's the way your recipe is set up, then yes, you're gonna put three gallons into the calculator in this particular situation. I've, I've already got it set up correctly. This is it. On the other hand, if you're working with a recipe that says to add three gallons of spring water, what that probably means is you're supposed to go buy three individual one gallon things of spring water at your local grocery store and then dump all three of them in, in their entirety. That's only the volume of your water not the volume of your honey and your fruit and your water. So you're gonna have to calculate what your actual beginning volume is in that case. This is where the recipe that I picked as an example comes in handy. You see, honey is usually right about 12 pounds per gallon and most fruit is right about nine pounds per gallon. So I have approximately one gallon each of fruit and of honey, two gallons total worth of volume. I can add that to three gallons of spring water and my total volume would then be five gallons. If I change the target volume in the calculator to five gallons, you can see that has a significant impact on the starting gravity. It goes down quite a bit. And also another quick tip here, kind of on the side, but 
even if you have one of those water to three gallon type recipes, you might actually need to calculate how much water you're going to be using so you know how much water to buy. In this particular instance, if I had one gallon of honey and one gallon worth of fruit and my target volume was three gallons, then I would know that I need to buy one gallon worth of spring water to top off to the three gallon mark. And again, these are estimates to a certain extent, but in my experience, they've been pretty spot on. I also wanna note real quick that this does work if you continue checking additional fruits. So let's say you have one of those mixed berry bags. Well, you can enter both your raspberries and your blueberries and uh, your strawberries or whatever it is that the three berries are in that particular bag. You can enter all three of them and the calculator works just as well. And I think that should about cover it. Now, obviously in some cases, if there are more unknowns, you may do a little bit more guess and check kind of stuff, but that should pretty much cover the basics of how this calculator works and help you to calculate your starting gravity, even with whole fruit in primary. Now, the last thing I wanna mention real quick, you may have heard me refer to knowing how far off this calculator is. That's because I'm lucky and I know some people in the alcohol industry with access to laboratory professional equipment kind of stuff. And they've been kind enough to take some of my homebrew samples into the lab and run them on a machine I'm told is called an alkalizer, which gives me, well, I mean, professional grade results, as good as you're gonna get. And I have compared those to the calculated values I got from the Gottmead calculator. Across a decent sized handful of different samples that I've sent in, I've only ever been off by a maximum of three points worth of gravity. And that's as far off as I've been when using just a hydrometer on my homebrew. It's also entirely possible that those three points could have been just simply due to me screwing up one of my measurements. I am human after all, and sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get all of the honey out of the bucket or whatever it is that you're trying to do. So I know I'm just a guy from the internet, but hopefully the laboratory confirmation is enough to give you confidence that you can trust the Gottmead calculator as a decent estimate of your starting gravity, at least as far as homebrew goes. This has been Jordan from Arrow to the Mead. Thank you for joining me. Have a good however long until I see you again.